nice to give feedback on the minutes. I just have a couple of spelling things. I know. Oh, my name is L A U R I E. Oh, yeah. And then Susanna is S U Z A N N A H. S U S. Oh, S U S. Oh, push. S U S, but it has an H at the end. S, so it's S U S. I work with a Lori L O R I, so I tend to spell it like that. <laughs> but other than that, I thought you got all the points. Can is that is that the only comments we have on the September minutes? Okay, for November, I will bring the legal, yeah, the August minutes, yes. Este, can Do somebody make a motion to accept uh, them? I, I move to accept with the changes. Any discussion? Thank you. Uh, all those in favor vote, aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. So the minutes have been accepted. I do like, what's his name? Your second grade teacher? No. John Stewart. Uh, John Stewart? No. Barack Obama? No. <laughs> I can't remember his name. He has a beard and mustache. He was on Saturday Night Live. Tom Dennis, Hanks? Yeah, Dennis Miller. Okay. Yeah, okay. Never mind. I'm not going to do any more pop culture references. Yeah. Because You're dating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Saturday Night Live this past Saturday. I haven't watched it for a long time. But the, the, bit, the thing was so spot on on Saturday night. I, I saw it. I actually watched most of it before I had to make myself go to bed. It was guffaw worthy. Okay. So who's going to give us the report? Every all the interested parties? Chris, it was at your house. You received a, a bunch of people to talk about the refugees who are going to be coming to Northampton. You want to tell us about that, please? <coughs> yes, it was uh, well attended. It was very uh, informative. And uh, I think people who came in with questions, certainly nobody left with any questions unanswered, I would say. Um, they covered a lot of uh, ground over what the true definition of being a refugee is, so how you get classified in that status. And I think we, you know, the most staggering point for me is that most people who live in a refugee camp live there for about 20 years is the average, which nobody really quite could believe that. So there are people who are 20 who were born in refugee camps, and even though they're from another country and they culturally feel that way, they've never actually been in their own country. Um, we had sign-up sheets for people to volunteer, so people volunteered. What did they volunteer for? There are four categories, as I recall. There's housing, there's circles of care, transportation, uh, transportation and um, I don't know. Volunteering remember. generally is Volunteering. where the transportation fits in and employment. Is uh, the that's true. And we were the 16th. <laughs> we were the 16th house party, and there was maybe in one more house party, a so-called house party scheduled at Congregation B'nai Israel. And then there are the subgroups that are meeting because the exact night, the next night, was a housing subcommittee meeting. So, and you've been organizing this, huh, Ms. Susanna? I organized the um, the house parties and the public meetings, and we're coming to the end. Sixteen. Wow. Because we did the two big public meetings too, so it's been a total of eighteen meetings. It's a lot. And you had calculated about. 500 to 600 people have been touched by these meetings? We have, well, no, more than that, but we have 600 volunteers that have come forward, so that's pretty incredible. remarkable. Wow. So I will say, as the host of the meeting, speaking of volunteers, I received about 12 phone calls, even though the, the number in the middle <coughs> said specifically just to RSVP for the meeting, people called with a lot of their ideas and donations, so I just forwarded an email to Catholic Charities with all those people's names and numbers. Thank you. In addition to that, I received one love letter and one piece of hate mail really? to my home uh, regarding holding the meeting at my house. And they were addressed to me, and I meant to bring them tonight because they were sent to me as a member of the Human Rights Commission, I believe, because that's the capacity that I was serving in, was a member of the Human Rights Commission, received an anonymous letter saying that the person was really angry and they were Catholic and no longer going to give to Catholic charities. Perhaps it was more intended for Catholic charities, but it came through me. And then the other was a check for $50 for a couple that lives on uh, Awaga Street that wanted to make a donation. Wow. So I'm going to get that check into the hands. Uh, the website is very clear that for people who want to make donations, it gets funneled through the United Way, I understand. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that's not up and running yet, so people do have to write checks until, but okay. it's been a matter of days, supposedly. There's going to okay. be a button you can click on, and it goes, the, um, there's a special fund that the United Way will hold. Can you say out loud again what the, what the exact website is or the Facebook page for the Refugee Project? Um, it's, well, uh, I have to remember it. Okay. Um, WelcomeHomeNorthHampton.org. Welcome. Carla, are you taking the minutes? I can take notes, but my computer's dead. Oh, so. Okay. Este, can, um, uh, Alisa, can the Northampton website, is it on the Northampton website front and center? Is this the kind of thing we can ask the Northampton? On the city's website? Yeah. It's not, that's a good question. That'd be a great request for the Human Rights Commission to make. I'll ask them. Yeah. I don't know how much they can do on the front page, but since this is an ongoing effort, yeah, can you send me like a sentence that I can send to her? Saying, you know, Northampton has, as a city, no? Has, is welcoming refugees, 51 refugees. Well, if you would like the to city of Northampton is partnering with um, Catholic charities to welcome the refugees, and so um, maybe I mean, that's all the sentence has to say. Is it possible right, to put a link to the, wet, to the yes, initiative's it, website? I have terrible <laughs> memory. The city of Town Northampton is, is partnering with Catholic charities to welcome, to welcome the refugees to the from city. Would it be possible to um, include a link to the initiative's website? Well, I can ask her for that. Okay, but the city of Northampton is partnering with if Catholic you know what, charities. I can send you a sentence. Thank you. All right, yeah. Those are like from where are the refugees is. And then ask them to put it in front of center on the home page. I don't know if they can do it, but we can certainly ask them. Who else went to the meeting? I did. Any thoughts? I, 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 was, I was real pleased with the attendance. I thought it was great. And thank you for, for hosting. Yeah. I didn't realize Northampton went that far out. <laughs> well, and I felt like I was driving to Cleveland. Um, <laughs> I live in the west. Oh my god. Thank god I had a GPS. GPS. It's like, are we still going? <laughs> but no, it was very, very well attended, I thought. And I thought the speaker, she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, she was so good. She That's was, the executive director of uh, She uh, had so much to share. And it, it could have been very dull. I mean, it could have just dreaded, but she was just wonderful. I thought the questions were great. And I, I was wondering about, you know, would there be any, I mean, the people that were there were incredibly supportive. I mean, there was not a hint of, I mean, there were really good questions. I mean, really good questions. Um, and so I was, we were, I was very pleased with it. I thought it went great, Lori. Yeah, and, and there was also a, a resettled refugee yeah. I think it would have been resettled by Catholic Charity. Nadine? Nadine. Nadine. He was really great. It was good to um, The second meeting that you had over at the senior center was a very was a really good meeting too. I was very pleased to see the turnout for being in, in the daytime. It was a good meeting. That was the refugee? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was yeah. It was uh, but it was the room the, the that the big Oh the, yeah, they had this giant yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty full. Um, so the people signed up. So now you have 600 volunteers. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. For the four areas, housing, transportation, circles of care, and volunteering. And and she even, made the, she even made the comment that okay. we have more. She was right. I've never heard that happen. She said we have more volunteers than we need right now. So she was almost saying that, you know, if we don't get right back to you, don't worry, you know, it's not, wow. it's just, I've never ever been to anything where anybody's ever said we have two, we have more than we need. I think Catholic Charities had no idea what they were coming into, that this community would be as um, forthcoming with yeah. its volunteerism because they don't have a full, I mean, when you have 600 people coming forward, you need a full-time volunteer coordinator, manager, and we don't have that, the project doesn't have that, so, um, we've got a few volunteers that are kind of being steered towards being volunteer coordinators alongside Susanna, so that's the way um, Catholic Charities is trying to handle the fact that there are so many people to organize and match up with 
the tasks and, and it's it's a huge undertaking. Actually. It's like a measurable percentage of the town population. Uh, is this the statistics guy? I mean, like <laughs> 629,000. <laughs> what does that come a to? A little over 2% of the town's population is well, volunteer. That's awesome. Wow. Which okay. is huge for volunteer programs. Yeah. Anything else from that? Well, I just want to say that the check that arrived in Chris's mail was addressed, I mean, made up to the Human Rights Commission, and I'm assuming we have to ask them to rewrite the check to the yeah. United Way. Is that right? You know? I we don't have a bank account, do we? No, we don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I, mean I, I think that you can sign it over to Catholic Charities. I mean, you might want to check with the person who sent it if that's okay with them, but I think that that could, it, it could just make it a simpler process. Okay, sure. That's what I was wondering, if we could do something like that. Or we could do slash Catholic Charities as long as the, um, the person who wrote the check is willing to let us do that. Do you want to call? What? No, that's great. Yeah. What was your question? <laughs> Who's the you in your question? Who's the you there? I was just wondering if Chris might want to call oh. people and ask them if they, if she could, if we could give it to Catholic Charity since this isn't a project of ours. Right. I mean. I will make that inquiry. Okay. <laughs> Does bring up the question of whether or not the Human Rights Commission wants to ask for a revolving fund, but that's a whole other I don't think this commission has ever done that. I believe that this donation was particularly intended for the refugee project because they said they couldn't be at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I will. Uh, but just in general, yeah. in the future, if this commission ever wants to do something that would cost money somehow, um, there is the ability to create a revolving fund within city government for funds to go into. But anyway, that's just down the line. Okay. How many people you say was one of the time that what, what like 30. 30. 30. Wow. Yeah. They're running your house? She has yeah, a huge room. room. I have a big room. Yeah. Okay. And there she has like room for another 20, 25. It was incredible. Wow. It's a big room. <laughs> and she has like 30 folding chairs too. I you do? Or did you I have a big room and some chairs. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I was so impressed with her folding chair. <laughs> I like the part. <laughs> um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is that the counselor can I represent. Wait, can I just? Yes. I thought we might want to talk about what we want to do next with refugees. Okay. Because I thought last time we talked about like, this is one thing we'll do, but maybe we'll do other things. Okay. What do you suggest? Um, well, I don't know if we could be a circle of care, you know. We could be a circle of care that helps people negotiate legal things like voting and registering and going to the post office and those sort of technocratic, democratic, governmental things. They're not citizens, so they won't be able to vote until they become naturalized. I know, but there's uh, we could. That's that's what our specialty is. Okay. I mean, I think that um, when Susanna was here, she talked about, you know, you know that you could meet people at the airport. So I mean, maybe there's something not quite being a circle of care, which I think maybe is kind of time intensive. You know, I, I was thinking the of the idea is that if you have a lot of people in the circle of care, it kind of you know, yeah, the, the duties rotate amongst. Yeah. It, is there a situation, and they didn't really talk about that, that they're coming staggered, we know that. But what happens when they, I mean, I assume they fly into Bradley. Sometimes I mean, they actually fly into New York and someone has to go all the way to New York to pick them up. But yeah. Okay, well, taking that to step, once they arrive in the city, is there a way that we could have, you know, we could maybe sponsor like a welcoming for them or something. Oh. You the know, circles of care, that's one of the main duties of the circle of care is to actually meet them at the airport, um, some members of the circle of care, and to have the home set up um, and to actually welcome them. But there could be a role that the Human Rights Commission could play in doing that as well or be part of that. You, you know, just I'm thinking to of the, the city as a exactly. Party. That's my point is to represent and just say as part of the human rights committee. We just as a human rights commission want to welcome you. You know, we're not. You know, let the circle of care set them up and do all the, all, but we would just 
maybe be there or something to just say, you know, welcome. I think it's a great idea. I can, I can visualize, for instance, in City Hall, when everybody gets here, then asking the mayor to ask all the circle of care people to get in touch with all the refugees and then like set up a one day where everybody can come. Yeah. And I then the city officially welcomes everybody who's here. And so we as a human rights commission can work with say, the mayor's office to give them an official welcome all together. Kind of like when the when when people are sworn in as, as citizens is a big ceremony. It's not the same thing, but then we can have encourage all sorts of program people and people from the city and maybe there could be a couple of like two minute speakers like, not to like a whereas a whereas a whereas necessarily but yeah like okay how do you get a post office box I know I'm, I understand the circle people can help with that and, but, and yeah. I, I'm even I'm even thinking of not even showing them how to do anything just to say we're glad you're here Okay, that's even better. You know what I mean? One of the things that's come up kind of to um, dovetail with what you're thinking about is um, there's been discussion about needing to kind of create maybe signs or um, like a letter of welcome or something in their native languages, mm -hmm. and that could be a nice thing for this commission to take on is making sure that we have um, some basic language um, preparation so mm -hmm. it would be creating like a sign that says welcome to Northampton or the city welcomes you or something in their native language or but just you know thinking about those kind of elements that the Human Rights Commission could add to what's already kind of being envisioned. Yeah I, I just I don't need to control this but I, I just like the idea of them seeing that there is a group that's welcoming them that's not part of an organized thing to help them yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're a resource for them. Yeah, and, and it's just, you know, the the these are just you know, these are just residents of the city. They're not they're not here to help you do something, they're not here to help you do that. They're just saying we're glad you're here. Yeah. And I think that would be a good role for the Human Rights Commission. Well we yeah, could we could make a sign. Oh that's absolutely we're glad yeah. you're here in their, in language. their language. Yeah. Well we could also spell out four or five things that we might be useful to someone. In, in, the, in, the, in several languages, because it's not just one language. Well, here's, um, yeah, rather than, yeah, saying welcome to Northampton in the different languages, so I don't remember where everybody's coming from. So we don't have Congo, Burundi, um, and then Syria. possibly Afghanistan, unlikely though, so that that would be um, one of two languages, and then Arabic would be the other ones for Syria and Iraq. And then we have to be sure that it's the right language because, as we know, some countries have more than but one But not language. everybody in Syria so. and a lot of the countries speak the same Arabic. Right. Like if you have yeah, yeah, we got gotcha. Yeah, that's what we were the, just saying, um, just to make sure we get the right language. The I Burundians think. will probably speak Karundi or Swahili. Mm -hmm. And um, the folks from the Congo may speak French, may speak Swahili, so we'd have to, and that's the problem is that we don't, we don't necessarily but get enough. But the circle, of, the circle of care people can tell us. Right. What is it, what, in what language do we need to say welcome to but, you know, Catholic Catholic charities can tell us. Well, Catholic well, charities. Well, might, not one of the things about a lot of in the countries in Africa is they were formed by the colonial powers That's that right. occupied them. So That's they right. have many different tribal groups who warred against each other, many for a long time don't even speak the same languages, they hate each other, they yeah. and so forth. So we you, you know, then some people speak different tribal languages like as you're going well, that's why there's an app for this. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why in like ten languages. Someone just suggested we need to ask Catholic language. charities what are those languages so we get the right language so we don't end up putting it in a language. It's like no, not that language. Yeah, because yeah. just for example, if like the folks in Iran in Iran do not speak Arabic because right. they're not an Arabic people. They're not they're they 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 speak Farsi just for example. Yeah. Thank you. And I lived with Iranian, so I know that. Okay. <laughs> um, so the, one of the things Catherine said though is that that they don't always have accurate information. It's kind of chaotic where they're mm -hmm. coming from. So they, they might right. tell us, they might tell them, you know, well, three people are coming in two weeks, but it might be five people, and maybe it won't be the, the country they said, you know? So it's not something, it's not necessarily that we're gonna know it ahead of time. Well, no, that's why when, by the time everyone's here. But, and also one thing I else wanted to say is that this, they're gonna be coming over, they're being phased in here. 
So it could be, you know, I don't know how long. Up until but. September 30th, because it's the whole fiscal, okay, so federal it's, fiscal. They year. might start coming in January, but right. come over the whole course of the year. So <coughs> well, then we do it when the last one gets here. I think well, that's Well, I just, we yeah, do it each time they come. I mean, it's yeah, not, it's, it's not, I don't think we're talking about Wait, we're talking out about a building things. and having a party. The, the kind of big gathering is what you were talking about. Yeah, I was talking about a big yeah, gathering yeah. where. Oh, I see, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I mean, I like that idea also. Is it what is feasible to do for, for the Human Rights Commission to do? We could all easily ask for space and bring, you know, munchies and things and then have the mayor welcome people as, as they come and have other people attend also so they just start meeting, not just the people in their circles, but other, other people. Yeah. I volunteer to be just the person on the street to say, yo, hi, how are you? Okay. Welcome. Good. Yeah. Oh, and you are the expert on public transportation also. Well, I, I'm hardly, well, I will take that, but I think I'm, it's a bogus way, but you know. I'm not saying that you're the, that's your role, but you certainly know yeah. which buses run where. Yeah. And how well, at least some of them anyway. So the other thing I was thinking is that maybe then what I could do is go to our website um, and just do a simple four page brochure of what is the Human Rights Commission about. And then that could be part of their welcome yeah. kit when they get to, as they arrive. Right. That says, if you ever have any doubt, if you ever have any questions, We're resources. resources, you want to, Karen, you want to say something? Yeah, I, um, so I'm just trying to follow all the different ideas that are popping up here. But I'm, am I understanding that there's an idea that the Human Rights Commission should host uh, some kind of welcome event for each family that comes, and that would be open to the public? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wait, for e you mean each no, one as they, they come? Not each one. one. Asking for all of them, when they, by the time yeah, they all get here, one of them. One of them to the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. But then Joel's talking about something different, which is just some kind of welcoming. You could be in their homes when they get there to say, I'm representing the Human Rights Commission, welcome. Yeah. But that's a different scenario. Yeah, I'm not thinking of it as much as a big thing. I think it's just we're part of, we're just. Human Rights Commission in this city, we just want to say welcome, we're glad you're here. So Joel, would you feel like would, would one person representing and going to each new family's house do it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I think it was, I like the idea that it's as many as we could to say hello, so it doesn't look like it's just one person from the city. I wonder about a language barrier yeah. initially, that people who are just learning English and us saying, we follow the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, and mm -hmm. it's a little complicated. Because it's sometimes just a smile and a hello does it. Yeah, I, I, I'm maybe a, I, I'm just, yeah, you, I, I'm not necessarily thinking this has to be a big, you know, this is a political thing, and this is how you go around, you know, you know, in the city, and if you have a problem, you got it. I just thought it was more of, you know, we're an organization within the city, and we just want to make sure you know that we're happy to have you. That's kind of all I was thinking. That's a lovely idea. The, 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 I think that, yeah, we can do that, but let's not have a quorum when we do that, because then we have to post it as a public meeting. That's fine. Just have two, you know, I have volunteers of two people. Yeah. I, don't know. I wonder if um, it might be more effective if we did, as a group, once everybody has arrived. I'm imagining people arriving from various and sundry places having to navigate a lot of new faces, 600 volunteers or whatever percentage of 600 volunteers are in their circle, um, navigating the school community, navigating the neighborhood. There's a lot of people that they're going to be meeting, and I wonder if it's um, in the best interest of the people who are arriving to have someone from our committee sort of parachute in to say welcome and then parachute back out again. I mean, if we wait until the, all of them come in, I mean, the beginning people who have been here Ten months. I think we could take a photograph of the Human Rights Commission and send it to them with a list of what we do. And uh, then, I mean, I, oddly enough, if they saw me in Northampton, they, you know, it would be a face that they might recognize. You're suggesting it be understated rather than overstated because people are going to be overwhelmed. And I, 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 I tend to agree. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to understand what our purpose would be to make them feel welcome. Right. And to make but them feel yeah, aware. They have a caring team for that. Right. But this is a city mm -hmm. body. 
so it's a different kind of welcome. I, I guess my thought behind it was that we're not part of their working group that is dedicated to them. We are just part of the city saying, you know, these people are all here, but as the city human rights commission, we want to say welcome. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. welcoming to. everybody with a big uh, meeting at the end when they've all arrived, and that might make more sense that this is one of the functions of our city government is that we have a human rights commission and we also welcome you. And, and in the meantime, we can give them a brochure. Yeah. As far as I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of welcome kit. Mm -hmm. So that, that could be put in there. So I can find stuff from the website to put there. Again, it's in English, but then their, their circles can help them mm -hmm. tell them, look, this, this, this commission exists. If you have any issues, any problems, if the questions, they're happy. They, you know, they're right there. If they, and then, yeah, when they're all here months later, then have a big, and maybe that's like the big celebration of the Human Rights Commission for 2017. Yeah, I mean, it would probably not happen until like October. Yeah, right. Can we, I mean, you don't sound, you want Oh, to, no, 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 that, that's fine. I, we're talking about two different things. Yeah. You know, that, that's the yeah. main. That's You're talking the as they come, and then, and then I'm saying, how about when they all come? Maybe, I don't know, this may be kind of crazy. Maybe it's every time, if there are 51, right? Well, it's 51 individuals. It could be 17 families. Right. Okay, so maybe when, say, if they, when they're around 20, maybe we do it twice. Mm -hmm. When they're around 20 people, we do a welcoming, and then we do another welcoming to the last 20. And that way, there's not so much time between the welcome. That's not bad. One of the things that would be good is like you, they, they said, at least if you, you're doing this, it'll give them maybe a sense of empowerment. So that because some of these folks have been through like unbelievable ordeals, and some of them might also end up with post traumatic stress disorder. So if there's any kind of issues, you can maybe like help help things along. So that their their some of their issues can be dealt with in a much more reasonable way, because as somebody's known a lot of people from a lot of countries that didn't they had problems because of the what they went through in the back in their past. Okay, thank you. If they, can we then table this and take it up at the November meeting, and that, then we could just think about it, yeah. and then we can come to a decision at the next meeting in November. Yeah. Which tentatively is scheduled for November November thirtieth at five thirty right here. I'll get back to everybody regarding that in this week. The next item in the agenda is Councillor Klein will present on the movement for Black Lives. And I went to the link. I hope the rest of you did too. If they, what would yeah, you like to present? I didn't actually um, envision this as me presenting per se. I was hoping that we could do some brainstorming together. Um, after everybody's had a chance to look at the policy platform that the Movement for Black Lives has published. Um, and they did it very um, deliberately in a way that kind of invites people and groups um, into um, helping with advocacy around their policy platform. So did people have a chance to take a look at it? I mean, I can, it's too bad we don't have like a whole setup with a, you know, we could project <coughs> it. But essentially, um, the platform consists of five, five or six areas. Um, the war on black people, reparations, invest, divest, um, economic justice, community control, and political power. So six <coughs> areas. So what I was thinking about, I mean, I, I just feel really strongly that we're really in a moment societally where um, we have a responsibility to engage with the movement for black lives. And uh, I would hope that the Human Rights Commission feels like it's a place we want to um, be thinking and working. And, and if so, what I, what I would suggest, because I didn't plan this as a presentation per se, is that um, perhaps we should table this to the next meeting, but that everybody really take a look at the six different areas and see where they feel like there's a place to um, have the Human Rights Commission actually do something related to the platform steps, because they did write it in such a way 
but they're making suggestions along the way of different things that you can do as a community, as an individual. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I was hoping to be able to do today, but it really does mean that everybody has to do their homework and kind of take a look at the six platform topics um, and really come up with some ideas so that we can brainstorm together about how we can operationalize um, something around um, as many of them as we feel like we can take on. I, I get an F. Okay. Homework. <laughs> I, I didn't look at it, I'm sorry. I the other thing we can do, I mean, I'm willing, if you want to do it this way, I, we could request a, um, a projector, we could put them up, and we could read them together, but it's, it's really meaty. I mean, it's really um, dense language, so for us to sit here and kind of read it together isn't the most efficient way, I don't think, to do it, which is why I think if each person kind of looks at it at home and pulls out the things that they think are the most um, possible for us to somehow participate in them and that we talk about it and come and even if we come up with one or two things that we can do out of the six areas um, it could be writing a letter to, to somebody it could be deciding to create a resolution that's about a call for reparations it could be um, something about mass incarceration you know that, that we want to somehow figure out a way to intervene and cycles of incarceration in our city or you know I'm just totally talking off the top of my head here but um, I just think it's a really important opportunity for us to to do something and I also want to bring up something that was on the um, the agenda twice I think in last year which is very much linked to this originally I proposed before I was the liaison to the Human Rights Commission I proposed that um, we work together as a Human Rights Commission to put together some listening sessions with communities of color in Northampton. <coughs> it kind of fell off the agenda and I didn't come to a bunch of meetings before I kind of got assigned to the Human Rights Commission. But that's, that's something else, you know, if we don't want to go with um, looking at the platform and figuring out where we fit in, that's, that's something else that's still, it's a very labor intensive task and it's a very sensitive task that will take a lot of thought and a lot of work, which is partly why I thought it might be too much for this commission, but um, that's another possibility. We could talk about kind of reinvigorating that idea of the Human Rights Commission, figuring out how it can be a leader in conducting listening sessions. Is right. there a local Black Lives Matter chapter in Northampton or Springfield or Amherst or Northampton's is not really active. There were a few people, um, we have a very small black population here, and uh, there was one woman in particular here in Northampton that kind of, but there is um, BLM 413, which kind of encompasses the entire region, including Springfield, um, which is somewhat dormant, but there are people that, you know, at different um, flashpoint kind of moments. So someone from, uh, Thank you. From 413. Thank you, Susan. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yes. Possibly. The, the, the people who are involved aren't necessarily um, engaged with the policy platform. So, you know, we'd, we'd have to kind of just figure out how to um, direct the discussion, I guess. Este, every Monday on WHMP radio at around 9 o'clock in the morning or 9.30 on Bill Newman's show, he has a segment called Black in the Valley. And, if they, and they talk about you know, all sorts of issues and events and people. Um, maybe in terms of a listening session, we could just listen to the program and, and hear what, what's going on. In, or invite them to come to a to a human rights meeting, or go wherever they they live in. They haven't lived in Amherst, so if they're the two women who who run that segment. Mondays at nine. Yeah, Mondays at nine or nine fifteen or nine thirty. That's the thing. Oh, well, this is being recorded. It's all archived too. Yeah. So you can listen to it online yeah. if you go to the WHMP website. But it's on Mondays, like in the valley. Um, and then there are. Yeah, we can liaison say with Casa Latina and say, you know, we, this is what we'd like to do. We'll go to, you know, Florence, the mm -hmm. old Florence school. There's a auditorium there, and they just they can invite a bunch of people, and 
and we can listen. We can ask questions and listen. Mm -hmm. And but I think all of this, we, the kind of stuff that we, we need to have the brochure first. I mean, I really would love to be able to then have people leave with something. If they something concrete and a way to contact us in a sense of what we do. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> if they, what's the other thing? Um, then you said something else, else uh, um, when we saw. Uh, we said the listening session, the Black Lives Matter. So I don't know if it's necessarily what we can do in relation to the Black Lives Matter. Is that what else can we add to that? Lori and I are on this uh, city police committee, um, the open that, that data portal. And that is something the police chief said. You, you may know this. Maybe you all know this. That is, that sprung out of President Obama's call for police departments to be transparent. And, and for, because when you're transparent, then you can see what's happening. If there's a problem, then you can address it. And President Obama's call came as a result of the Black Lives Matter movement. So already the city system, at least through the police department, is doing, is doing something. And it's not just related to Black Lives Matter. It's obviously they're collecting information on everybody. Mm -hmm. But the Black Lives Matter movement seems to have just re-energized the civil rights movement. That's about all sorts of people. Brian? Um, so I have a thing that may relate to new business, but it's sort of tied into what you keep referencing about a pamphlet or something like that. Um, when, when a revolving account was mentioned, it kind of poked something in my brain because I kept thinking to myself over the course of the past couple of months, like there, there are all these awesome initiatives that we could potentially do that involve printing things or making materials like banners or welcome signs. And um, until you know some kind of revolving account was mentioned, I hadn't even thought about the notion of um, how does that stuff get financed? If we were to make flyers and give them to new arrival refugees, if we were to have some kind of documentation that was created or um, needed to acquire, I mean, uh, a recorded a recorded session of something may require some kind of licensing fee. Um, how would we handle that? And is it potentially a good time to consider what some kind of revolving account might look like for the city? Karen, you work for the city. <laughs> I used to. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer. I've not worked under this administration. Oh, but um, my question is, is does the city print uh, brochures? Do you, do you remember from that time when I needed to print 300 copies of something? Um, we have, and it's come out of the mayor's office. Sometimes it comes out of departments that are connected with the, uh, the okay. planning department we take care of planning, planning board. Okay. Well, for now, the brochure that I'm suggesting would just be a four page, you know, just literally something like this. Mm -hmm. And then I would, I would, I was going to just print it and then bring it yeah, to the city hall. Yeah, make it the most. Yeah, you know. take it to paradise copies and if they, so, but I think, I mean, the, the revolving door account, that's something I think you have to take on for <coughs> down the road. I mean, I, I just do not have any idea how to do well, Why? it wouldn't be relevant until the next fiscal year because the budget's already set for 2017, but um, we, we, it would behoove us to start talking to the mayor now about the possibility so that when the budget is worked on for the next fiscal year, um, funds are made available. And we're talking about a really small amount of money. I mean, right. I think some of the commit, like the, the problem is, is that we don't have a source for income other than our $15 check perhaps. But you know, for instance, the um, Disability Commission has a revolving fund and they get their money from um, when people, uh, parking fees, when people park in handicapped spots, the fee that they pay, which is like $275, goes into the um, Disability Commission's revolving fund. We'd the, be happy to take the rest. All the other spots. <laughs> <laughs> the human, the youth commission has a revolving fund, and I'm not actually sure where their um, mm. initial funding came from. So anyway, we'd have to talk to the mayor about it, but we would need to start talking about it now because 
he'll start doing his budget negotiation or budget kind of planning in the spring. So it would be useful to start talking to him now about it. Okay. Brian, do you have a comment? Um, yeah, so I was just going to say, I think one of the other reasons why thinking about that for the future could become helpful is because if there was ever, if there was ever an instance of um, the program that we as a commission wanted to engage in or, or run an informational program or something like that, um, without having some kind of, um, without having some kind of financial precedent, it would be incredibly difficult to say, um, write a grant proposal or something like that. Um, and those are the kinds of things that, to my knowledge, city government bodies can do. Um, I know university bodies can. And those are also state, uh, you know, state governmental agencies. Um, so like, with, with nothing at all in mind, just thinking potentiality, um, it would be impossible for us to write a grant proposal as a group for anything that we wanted to do without already having something in place. Okay. Well, I think that, um I think we are a government body under the city government, mm -hmm. and I think we were under the mayor's office in the orchard. Is that still the case? Mm -hmm. um, so I think we could we could write on behalf of the North City of Northampton, the Rights Commission. We could write grants. Um, right on, know, on behalf of the city, it would make it more difficult. I I think it would make it more difficult to specifically um, acquire like a grant for this body. No, I think we would write it on behalf of the huh. of the committee. Um, I think other committees have done that before. Cool. Um, we should, if it's something the committee wants to uh, look into, then yes, we should talk to the mayor. Um, I also know that it's it, it's a process. It's a long, you know, long it's, and it establishes something in written in carbon stone that our city treasurer has to maintain and oversee and report on um, and it, it's not terribly flexible it's not terribly nimble we have to go through a process to request funds and reimbursements and everything and I don't know how often the Commission needs available funds and wonder if, if there are more flexible ways to yeah, because usually with a, you know, I work for public television with a grant, Thank you. that Thank money you so is much. for a specific item. Mm -hmm. you, it's not just going to your general fund. You know, you're writing a grant for something specific. Right. So it creates somewhat of a challenge. I feel like we've gone down a rabbit hole because this is all theoretical at this point. Yeah. We don't, I mean, I don't know how well, to do it. The good thing about the idea is I'm thinking, yeah, if we could, you know, I'll talk to the mayor, and if somewhere down the line we can get a revolving fund and we could, you know, set up something, get a little bit of money, maybe that money pays for someone to give a workshop to all the program heads on cultural competence. Ta-da! That's a really cool thing to get done. Right. So, you're, you're the one who brought it up? Who brought it up? Alisa. Alisa, you brought no, it up? Right? Right? No. Who brought no. it up? Karen. Alicia. Well, originally, yeah. 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 Okay, well, thank you for that rabbit hole. It was, <laughs> we've, we've come out with some ideas. What you said is exactly what I was thinking. Worst case scenario, it sits until the end of the financial, uh, at the end of the fiscal year, and we as a commission sponsor, you know, like you said, yeah. the speaker to the program heads or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. So we're putting on the table then for November that people are going to then go to this website. You can click on the link in your agenda mm -hmm. and then think of ways that what else can we do? We already mentioned that the city's police department's already doing something. There's the radio station is doing something. What else? How can we uh, contribute more in a sustained way? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Lisa? No business. I will make a commitment to read it. I read the yeah. opening page. It is very dense. So, yeah, I think you're right. We should do it between this meeting and the next one. Yeah. Any new business? Well, don't you have some? I do, but everybody goes first. Oh, okay. Can I just ask how I can have my email? Who do I get my email to so I can get the agenda? Lynn sent me your email. Okay. Este, I was away. I was in Puerto Rico until Monday night. So I'm just starting to get back into the group here. So you will get everything from that one. I had assumed that when I sent the agenda, 
Because I heard that new people have been appointed. It's like, okay, well, then we'll then forward it to people. Um, are there any more spots left open? Is there one more spot, I think? I think there is. There we? We have four sure there, there and four there. It's nine members. So I'm not officially a member. Oh, okay. So we have two. eight members. No, how two many? spots left. Two yeah, spots left. And, and there's one person who I think they have lined up who couldn't get sworn in by right, another we, we approved another person in council. I am blanking out on who it is. But, so I think there's just one spot left in this group. And my understanding is, is that the mayor has several applications that he's considering for that last spot. Oh, that's great. Yep. So I heard. I've never been in this committee where it's full strength. Oh, oh there's a Davina Miller. Oh, right. Davina is the other person. I never got the email. Oh, she sent it. it. Yeah, she sent it two days ago. Oh. I was like, the very good guy. Okay. So, the new business is that I hope that I know, in if the, the other thing to think about in November is who's going to be the chair starting in January? I've been doing the chair. If they think for two or three years, I've lost track. Maybe it's been one year, but it feels like five. And I want you all to think about who would like to be the next chair. And, and are you also going to leave the commission? Then I'll leave the commission. I did get. I was recently reappointed, but I'll leave like maybe just a few meetings in after being chair. After not being chair. After not being chair. I want to know. I want to know what it's like again to just come to a meeting and. I want to contribute. I think we have some really good ideas working. Um, I want to do the brochure, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, so how does that? How, how does how in the past has that happened when you needed to get any? The chair? members um, nominate someone, or someone says I offered to be the chair, mm -hmm. and then we have you know. Oh, usually the way it's a, in my experience, somebody says, "Okay, I'll be the chair." Excellent. All those in favor. <laughs> You know, it happens very quickly. <coughs> Next thing you know, yeah, you're the chair. <laughs> well, we could all think about it and uh, come talk about it next month. You and let me just tell you, the part of the duties of being the chair is being in communication with the mayor's office, and if the you know sending out the emails, the agenda. You know what helped me, and, and I, is can you send us all of an email? Uh, basically, you in very general terms what the duties are okay. of the all right because i really don't know other than what i think okay okay <laughs> and that may be what impression have i left with wrong. you <laughs> yeah well that's what i'm saying i sure as hell don't want no i'm just <laughs> well i um also have you ever had a chair and a vice chair or um it seems like it would be helpful to have a vice chair yeah we have had a chair and a vice chair and that has helped a lot because then there are some months that there's just a lot to do. Yeah. And there are other months where you, all you're doing is setting up the agenda. But um, it's just for people who already have full days, being chair is really adding a lot more. And if the chair can't be here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and the other good thing about having a vice chair is it's sort of like the setting somebody up to be the chair. So, yeah. you know, you just have somebody with experience who can and there was also a time when it, they, some of us would go to the city council meetings on behalf of the Human Rights Commission and to encourage the, the city council to, to do something or to support the city council in something they were doing. Mm -hmm. So it's not just this meeting, it's preparing for this meeting and then it's following up. I, have, I already have a list of things that I'm following up on. So I guess you should think about if you're the chair, you have like couple hours at, at most extra no you Carla you take notes it's like a couple of extra hours of your month dedicated to the Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. at the very least see yeah, yeah. <laughs> well thanks for your long service to the city <laughs> thank you it's been it's been so what it's been <laughs> <laughs> How many members have you seen come and go? A lot. And my commitment is always, I'll be chair until this commission gets going again. Because I just like, I can't leave this half-assed, you know. But now we're all okay, so I feel like, okay, somebody else. I've learned a lot. It's been very good. I've seen things happen because the Human Rights Commission exists. I th I've seen change. And they, I'm very proud of being part of this. So 
there you have it. Well, I propose that we all think about it and come back next month willing to say whether we want to be chair or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll remember, Joel. Remember that a few meetings ago it was like we had two other chairs, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then. And then. <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is yeah. history. <laughs> yeah. I have two other really short. Oh, new business pieces. Okay. <laughs> One is that I just wanted to, um, I kind of sent this out in an email, but I want to remind everybody that um, for open meeting law purposes, it's really important to not do anything that could even smack of um, deliberation. So that, for instance, when an email was sent out about the house party and everybody kind of responded, that actually could be considered deliberation. And so it's really important not to respond to all. Um, if it's a scheduling thing, that's OK. But anything that could be content oriented, if that's really important. So I just want to remind the commissioners. And the other thing I wanted to ask about, and this is, might also be something that is a longer discussion, but I just wanted to bring it up. I've been thinking a lot about how um, there's a, a lot of intersection between other issues going on in the city and human rights. A lot of issues are human rights issues. Issues of sustainability, climate change, um, disability, those are all human rights related issues. So I was wondering if the commission would be interested, and this would be more of a time commitment on people's part, so it may be beyond the can of what any, anyone wants to commit to, but um, I was wondering if members wanted to kind of serve as liaisons to other committees and commissions in the city that are related to human rights. So I could imagine, and again, just kind of talking off the top of my head in the spirit of brainstorming, um, a member of this commission being kind of the, the liaison to the um, Energy and Sustainability Commission to talk about um, those kinds of issues as they relate to human rights, or somebody being a liaison to the um, Disability Commission. And we could look at all the different committees and commissions that exist in the city and see which ones feel the most relevant um, if we're interested. And it also doesn't mean you have to go to every single Energy and Sustainability Commission meeting, but it could mean introducing yourself to the chairs of those commissions and saying, if something comes up that feels like it's a human rights related issue as well as a energy and sustainability issue, would you let us know and we can talk about it in our commission as well so that because I, I really like the idea of kind of cross fertilization of ideas um, between city commissions and especially because human rights is so relevant to so much else that goes on in the city it just seems like a way for us to be more engaged as human rights commissioners that's a great idea Alisa thank you very much if they, I did that the very thing I went with um, Marianne Labarge who's on the Disability. The disability. So, you know, she is. She's like she grabbed me, and then there I was. And it was a really good experience to go to their meeting and to learn about other issues that are happening. So yeah, that's something that we should look more into. Um, I'll put that on my list because there's a, somewhere there's a list of all the committees in the city, and then we could just talk about it. It's like here's the list, and so who wants to be the liaison? And I don't even know how many. It's on the home page of the city's website. There's a list. I think under city government, there's there's a list of everything. And some of them aren't going to be relevant, but some are. I mean, when I, I'm on the Energy and Sustainability Commission, we were talking, there's this kind of controversy that a lot of you might know right now around the lights that are being replaced around the city. And um, people, the public comment folks have been saying, you know, this is, the, they haven't said this is a human rights issue, but it, They've been saying, you know, this has a lot of impact, especially on older people because of the, the vision issues with um, glare. And so I was thinking, oh, that's kind of, it, it, it moves into the realm of human rights. And then, I don't know, I was sitting in some other meeting, I was thinking, oh, this is actually kind of a human rights issue. So I just think there's a way in which this stuff is all interconnected and it would be useful for us, I think, to have our fingers a little bit more on the pulse of the other kinds of things happening around the city. Thank you. Um, I will follow up and then in the next um, agenda list that I send out, I'll have a list of committees. Is there any other new business? Okay, does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Second? Second. 
Any, all those in favor say yay. 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 Okay.